Hi, I'm Greg Milner. Taking an order is a skill. There's a set format that most florists have, and usually it's something to the effect of the day of delivery, the recipient, the recipient's address, what the flowers are, delivery charge if, if uh, it applies, card wording, the person who's ordered, the client, their name, payment details, contact details. As far as the recipient is concerned, for many shops, um, contact with regard to the recipient uh, is also uh, mandatory in some stores. Now, when you actually look at that format, that's fairly straightforward. It's the idiosyncrasies that actually go with each of these sections that can trip particularly a newer staff member up uh, with regard to their training or out of the box things. So the first thing is to position yourself with what do you need to know or what don't you know? So for example, if an order is going to a business address, what time does the person leave work? The actual name, yes, that's straightforward, but you do need a surname. Are they temporary or are they uh, part-time or permanent staff members? Because if they're a temp, they may only be in once for that day or for that week and they may be on a totally separate list and the person on reception may not be aware. So that can foil and lead to problems. You need the floor. Um, are the flowers actually taken at reception? Because sometimes in high-rise city buildings in um, cities such as Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Perth, so forth, then reception could be on the 20th floor, but the person actually works on the 25th floor. So there are questions that need to be asked specifically for a certain topic. Now, if you actually directed uh, timing for the delivery and said, would you like AM or PM? It would be much easier to say, what time does the person leave work? And if they leave work at five, then perhaps say, we could have them delivered any time up to four. How would that be? Now, the client will tell you if that doesn't suit. If it does suit, then the pressure is off the workroom and it's also off the driver. So that's worth considering. Now, with regard to a hospital order, one of the biggest problems uh, with regard to hospitals is the short stay. You have an older person, if it's a maternity and the older person is ordering, they may consider that, oh goodness, you know, my great niece will be in hospital for a week. No, not necessarily. So it's a case of knowing when the baby was born, if it's maternity, um, the sex of the baby, because you don't want to send all pink flowers if it's a baby boy. It might sound sexist, but most dads aren't happy with that. Um, now, we also need to know things like the, you know, if it's a hospital, is it private? Is it public? Don't say the ward number because then you could find that somebody says, oh no, they're in a private room. Um, so therefore, it's much better to say, do you know the room or ward number? Then you've covered yourself tactfully. Also, don't always assume straight away that the recipient, uh, if, it was, if it was stated, I wish to send flowers to a hospital, it could be to a staff member at the hospital, not necessarily a patient. So you can see how there are, as we say, these idiosyncrasies, things that need to be at the back of your mind so that you've got all the right questions to ask of your client to get the most appropriate information so that your driver is not bringing the flowers back. Another point to be considered is day patients. There's more and more day patients in hospitals. Now, if they go in for an early surgery and all has gone well, let's say wisdom teeth, they could be out at 11 o'clock and you know, your flowers haven't even arrived yet. So again, these are questions that you need to know so that you can direct the client to, it may be better not to send flowers to the hospital in case we miss them, can we send them to the home address? So if we were to take the example of a funeral now, let's say, the standard procedure is to ask what is the late person's name? Now, if you're asked a question such as, oh, I don't know, um, their flowers for the casket, should they be delivered to, let's say, to church service? So in that instance, should they be delivered to the church or should they be delivered to the parlours? 
Now, if you're listening to this and you don't know, the usual procedure is that the casket flowers go to the parlours. Now, there will be some of you that go, you know, you could be in an area, country area of Victoria, where, you know, the parlours don't work that way. But in the majority of cases, that's the way that it is. But you need to know. And that's the clarity of that situation. What else do we need to know? When it comes to card wording, with card wording, what happens if somebody says, I wish to remain anonymous? Now, in some stores, unless a card is actually signed, there could be a, a procedural or policy in procedural direction, you can't take the order. Now, if that happens, you need as a staff member to know where you stand, what you can actually say to the client and what you can't. Now, why would somebody say, we don't take anonymous cards? And quite often it's the case that a recipient may ring and say, I've received flowers. I need to know who they're from. Uh, hypothetically, you know, I've been married twice. Quite coincidentally, both my husbands have the same name. So I don't know whether it's from my ex-husband, and we are on good terms, or my current husband, and I don't want to ask because it's embarrassing. You can see the trap that can be walked into there. So you need to know what the direction is from your store. But that's what I'm saying about these little idiosyncrasies because they just pop up from, or some of them just pop up from time to time and it's good to be aware. Then you can ask and then you can have a clear direction. Now, another little bit of advice that I'd offer if the business allows you to do this. The order that I gave at the beginning, I always recommend that once you've got the recipient's details down, ask them what they'd like to say on the card. And I really haven't talked about the flowers at this point. Why the card wording at that stage? Because the card can tell you volumes. The closeness, if it says all my love, then you know it's a close situation. It also means possibly they're going to spend more. So knowing what the occasion is without often having to ask by the card leads you into your selling situation. Now, don't assume that you know how much somebody can or can't spend, perhaps even by your own spending patterns. Given social media today, your clients can come from anywhere and from any background. So therefore, treat your selling as an open book so that um, you're literally trying to look at the occasion, position yourself. As I've mentioned on a, a previous presentation, you might say, shall I quote from our glamour range, our superior range, um, different names, our premier range. You know, you've got different names you can put to this to position yourself above an average sale. And don't forget those add-ons. Sometimes take a maternity situation. Would you like a soft toy attached? If you've got uh, a range of chocolates, and I love chocolates, if somebody wanted to sell me chocolates as an add-on, I'm a goer. But my question would be, if I didn't know the brand, are they good? And as a seller, you should know. And there should be honesty there. I mean, if they're good, tell your client they're good. With the... Um, client themselves, it's fairly straightforward, the procedures there, you're going to get credit card details. If your firm does accept um, credit, uh, perhaps from a corporate client, then usually an order number um, needs to be stated. And be wary, because if it reads privately, in other words, Love Mary and Jim, then it could be the case that it's not on behalf of the company, it's an employee, that is actually using the company because they know they have an account. So an order number is a very good safeguard in that instance. Well, there's a few tips with regard to order taking. It's not the full format, but it's certainly making you think about, well, what do I know? What don't I know? And how can I improve taking an order? And I'll try and put a smile on my face because the more you smile, the better your voice actually sounds the more welcoming you are um, over the telephone. Good luck. Keep looking for these posts because there'll be more of them, more advice, and uh, enjoy selling. Thank you. Bye.